it felt, for me, it felt like every day was so long. Yeah. Because I was going home to my family. This is when I was living with my mum and dad and I was going home to them. At these times, I'm sitting with them. We're having dinner. We're having conversations. I know I'm a father. I know I'm going to become a father. Yeah. These people sitting around me who are so important to me don't know nothing. Because now becoming a parent myself, if my daughter didn't feel like she could come to me or something like that, I feel like it kind of hurt me. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It would kind of hurt me. Like, why does she not feel comfortable enough to come to me yeah. and tell me that this news, why is she scared? Why does she fear me? I don't want that, do you know what I mean? I don't want fear between me and my little, my daughter. If a child is not embraced by a village, it'll burn it down just to feel its warmth. <sighs> but what you're saying about. right now, um, it really accurate. relates to that quote. You said earlier, if she can't come to me, or if your son can't come to you, your your grandma, your, your mother, mother et cetera. Nah, and pow. that um, infrastructure mm -hmm. and that support and that blueprint, I guess, just exactly. to protect your kids. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Renaissance Podcast. Today's topic is about childhood, masculinity, fatherhood, creativity, and all that good stuff. And I'm here with a person I haven't seen in like 13 years. We go way back uh, since way childhood, back. way, way more fucking back. Too far back. Too fucking far the back. Farthest back you can probably guess. <laughs> Last time I seen this guy was. He was a child, and now this motherfucker has a child. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but man, that's this crazy. <laughs> that's just crazy. 12, 13, or 12, 13 13 years. now. What time do we? What, uh, what year did we? Twenty eleven. Two thousand eleven. Yeah, oh my, dude, that is crazy. And um, man, that is crazy. There's so much I want to say to you, man. Um, so much. I don't even know where to begin. You know what I mean? It's but before you begin, go on. I haven't said your name. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine I'm um, nameless. This uh, is this gentleman's name is Dean, um, aka Left Media. Uh, yep. you can check uh, check them out in terms of like video uh, creation services and just general exactly. content creation as well, editing, exactly. etc. Mm -hmm. um, if you're Northampton based as well, check them out. Check me um, out. East Midlands base, UK base, whatever. But man, yeah, man, that's what I'm doing. What do I that's what do I say to you? <laughs> what do you say, man? What First thing I want to say is like, my guy, what's it like being a father? What's it like being a father? We're the same age, by the way. Just want to clarify. Yeah, we're the same so. age. It's it's it's. You know, it's so normal now. It's like I live and breathe being a parent. Do you know what I mean? Like, because it's, it's yeah. such normal life for me now because my daughter is now three. Three? Fuck. She just turned three and her birthday is two days after mine, imagine. Her birthday is yeah. on the 26th of November. November. Mine's on the 24th. Yeah, she just turned three. I'm blessed, absolutely blessed. But yeah, it's just normal. It's normal life now. I feel like at a certain point, it's not even something that I do. It's not something like I do. Like, it's your routine. It's my routine. Yeah. It's every day. It's like brushing your teeth. You I'm don't think father. about it. I go to, yeah. I come here, I'll, I'll shoot something at the at Photo Mafia Studios. I'm still a parent. I go here, I'm still a parent. Yeah. I'll shoot. Like, I'm a parent 24-7, do you know what I mean? And that's something I'm always thinking about. I'm always thinking about the kids. They're, not, they're never off my mind. So if something like, I do it every day. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's, it's absolutely normal. Like, I breathe it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's how much, that's how deep it is when you become a parent. Because when you become a parent, it's not like people... I would think of it, it before I was a parent. The way I would think of being a parent is as if it's a job. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah. I like feel you like clock it, in, clock out. Clock in, you know, <laughs> you clock in, clock it's out. It's a twenty-four-seven thing. I've got man. twenty-two <laughs> days holiday in the year. You know what I'm saying? No, but that's how I would have thought about it before I was a parent. But then after, it's way more than that. Do you know what I mean? It's a ton more than that. It's like, mm. yes, it's a job in a sense that. I do what it's 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 it is work, but it's not because I love doing it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's, it's only it's, flesh and blood. Exactly, like, exactly. It's a bloodline, like, literally. Exactly, it's something that it's a daunting concept. It's a daunting concept. I feel like when you're not a parent, mm. if you're about to become a parent, let's say for example. Mm. But I feel like once you're in there, and you have this person that's come from you and come from your other half of course my partner and it's just like a mix of the both of you it's like i don't know how to explain it man i don't know how to explain it it just becomes like something so it, it becomes easy to a point because what what like you're you just kind of live it yes exactly yeah. that's what i'm trying to say exactly you live you live and breathe being a parent you live being a dad. adapt yeah exactly so yeah, man, it's normal. Was this like all planned or because, you know... Nah, man. No, it, wasn't planned. it wasn't planned. I'm not going to lie to you. It was not planned. It but what was your reaction planned. when like you were told you're having a baby? I was quite shocked, man. I was shocked. Yeah. I was shocked. I was shocked. I feel Speechless. like... 
it was like I just said, it was crazy daunting. Yeah. Because I think to myself, what the hell am I going to do? Obviously, I'm black. I'm a Zimbabwean. I'm African as well. How am I going to could tell this thing to my parents and my dad? Yeah. You know what I mean? How are they going to react? Because that's the first thing I think. Because obviously, I was 18. Yeah. I was 18 years old when I, got, when, when I found out my, when I found out I was having a baby. So the first thing you think when you're 18 is how are others going to react to this? Yeah. I don't actually straight away think, how am I going to react to this? I think, damn, how, how, people I, how are other it? people going to yeah. react to this? How am I going to tell my mum, my dad, how is life going to change in terms of all this kind of stuff? Mm. And it's one of those things, as being an African, it's, it's a scary thing thinking about how you're going to explain this stuff to people. But honestly, it took me so long to tell my parents. Yeah. When I finally told my parents, they were like, what have you been doing this whole time? Why have you not come to us sooner? Like, how, is, how have you been keeping this to yourself for so long? Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, how actually have I been keeping this to myself? Because I feel like it yeah. was, I got told, because she's born in November, it was like February times. So I feel like I went a good solid month, two months. Not it's selling. not too long. <coughs> yeah. yeah, it's not too long actually because I probably there's probably people out there that have probably told their parents like when the pill babies come out. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but that's why like it it took it felt, for me it felt like every day was so long. Yeah, because I was going home to my family. This is when I was living with my mum and dad, and I was going home to them. At these times, I'm sitting with them, we're having dinner, we're having conversations. I know I'm a father. I know I'm going to become a father. Yeah, these people sitting around me who are so important to me don't know nothing. Do you know what I mean? To a point, I feel like, because now becoming a parent myself, if my daughter didn't feel like she could come to me or something like that, I feel like it kind of hurt me. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It would kind of hurt me. Like, why does she not feel comfortable enough to come to me yeah. and tell me that this news or why is she scared? Why does she fear me? I don't want that. Do you know what I mean? I don't want fear between me and my little, my daughter. You want, because she's got everything. Exactly. And you want her to come to you. Exactly. I want her to come to me with absolutely yeah. anything. Because you you love her, you want to protect her with exactly. your life, et cetera. And you want to make sure that your daughter is given the world, it, but also everything. at the same time, um, that barrier, because obviously I, I don't speak to my parents like that. My father did. Uh, yeah. Um, obviously, I, you know, yeah, I podcast do, I do, your I sister do. mentioned I watched, it. Yes, <laughs> I watched the bro. The messages made me like blush and stuff. Like I screenshot the, um, or saved the image um, of a screenshot that your sister sent me and what you said to me. So, to, to and me, no, yeah. I put that as my favourites as well. So bro, in case if I have, listen, ever, it sounds like cringe or ever, but if I have a, uh, have a bad day, I look at it, I'll be like, you know what? I'm actually I'm, doing so good. Bro, I'm <laughs> absolutely glad. I'm glad that I gave you that. I'm glad that I gave you that. Man. You know what I mean? Because that concept, because to me, me, me and you, like, I feel like in terms of the household, in terms of being sons ourselves to our parents, oh, yeah, I feel yeah. like our relationship with our parents is so different. Yeah. Because I feel like, I feel like my parents didn't necessarily, they didn't necessarily make it easy for me to, to for me to have that kind of relationship where we have conversations and stuff like this. Yeah. But now I'm getting older. I feel like that was just because I was young. I feel like that's just because we couldn't speak on a level where we'd understand each other because yeah. I was so young. Now I feel like ever since I turned 18, ever since I've become a father myself, I feel like we've even gotten even closer now. Yeah. Obviously you hear that thing about when people have babies and when people have children, it just brings families closer together. And I, I, like, that is absolutely underrated. That is an underrated statement. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I feel like that, like as soon as I, I had my daughter, that. it yeah. absolutely brought my entire family. Like I'm not talking just my household. I'm talking about to all that. the other family that yeah. I have living in London, in Manchester, in all around, other places. Yeah, yeah. It all brought us together. You know what I mean? We now have like, and now, now I've fully got like a group chat on my WhatsApp with all my cousins and stuff like this. Wow. And we didn't have this before. Yeah. We were very close. We did a lot of things as a, as a family. My mum always made it a good job to like take us to like London and we go to like barbecues with our, with our larger family yeah, and yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. But we were never, once you leave that area, it was done. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, when yeah, you yeah, go yeah. to the barbecue, it's fun, it's everything. But once you leave and come back to Northampton, I mean, to done. my house, that'll be it. Yeah. There'll be no communication Until the next one. That. Yeah. Until the ne <laughs> yeah. Exactly, until yeah. the next function. That's what brown are like. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? And now, since I've had a child, I feel like we're way more in contact. We're way more in contact. We're way more close between me and my cousins. And I want, and I want to strive for even closer relationships between all my family members. Yeah. These are kind of things that I don't realise when I'm... Um, not a parent, just how important some of these relationships are. Yeah. And trying as hard as you can to hold on to them. Because then I think about my daughter and I think my daughter, um, I want her to have as much loving family and as much, as much, the more people that loves her. And obviously, like I've said, I'm speaking about my daughter. I've also got a son as well. Yeah. That I've had recently. Are both my kids. I want, <laughs> her, I want them. <laughs> thank you. Bro, thank you. Thank you. I keep, I keep talking about my daughter, my daughter. Like I don't yeah. have a son too. I've got both. I've got two kids, a son and a daughter. Dang. My son is two months old now. 
And yeah, this is what I just mean. I str- I want them to be loved by as many people on this planet as possible. Mm. It's a I mean? dangerous it's, place out there. Oh, so that, having is, that community and that foundation of a loving home. Just protection. Protection, yeah. People that she can think of. I don't want her to just like, if let's say she can't come to me about something, I want her to be able to go to her auntie, her uncle, her granddad, um, my girlfriend's, her nan, you know what I mean? Options. Her pap. I want her to ha- have anybody to go to if necessarily she can't come to me. Obviously, I want her yeah, and yeah. my son it's to come to, yeah, to yeah. me regardless. Uh, if not you, other people. Exactly, somebody in the family. <coughs> Damn. But yeah, that's just what I mean about this thing about relationships. That's what I mean about when I was watching the podcast that you were speaking about your family and everything. Bro, it absolutely... It made me realise things because life isn't all the same for everybody. It's not people a template. It's not a box. It's just so... It's not, made. man. It's not, and it's like, and I was listening to the stuff that obviously you were speaking about your father and stuff like this, and the relationship that you had. And I honestly feel like it would have been, it could have been so easy for me and my father to get to that point. I feel like the only difference, the only difference for me and my father is my father, my dad isn't as religious. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As your own, because mm. I feel like if he was, phew, boy, I feel like it could have been so easy for us to get to that point mm. where you are at with your own father. Yeah. But I, I feel like my dad, it's like. We've come. We've become a lot more closer since I've had a kid as well. Before, before, before I had a, before I had my kids, me and my dad had the type of relationship where we just we, he'd come in the house, we'd say hello to each other. We wouldn't have conversation. Yeah, I'd say something to him, he'd say something back. That's it. Do you know what I mean? We wouldn't have a conversation, and I feel like now we can have a conversation. I can sit down. I don't know if that's because of my kids or maybe that's because I'm an adult now, and he kind of maybe sees me as an adult. But I feel like I can sit down. Just me and him and watch the football together and we can have a conversation. That's and amazing. That. But I, I feel like before, places. that would have been so awkward for me. I'd have been yeah, like, being in the same room and stuff. What do I say to this guy? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it's they, like when two people are at the kitchen, you're waving your mom to Bro, <laughs> I'd be constantly sitting there waiting for my mom to slide through the room to create conversation yeah. or something like that. But no, it's not like that anymore. I feel like we're a lot more close. Yeah. Uh, I relish these kinds of things in our relationship. I feel like there is still turmoil, you know what I mean? There's still moments where I'm like, boy, this guy is just, because he's very strict. Obviously now I'm older, he's not strict on me because like, what can you say to me? I'm 23, you can't really. I feel like before our relationship was, like I just said, he talks at me and I listen. That's all our relationship was. You talk at me and I listen. And and there's still elements of that relationship even now. Sometimes there's conversations where we had slightly and he's just trying to talk at me and it's not as much conversational, but I feel like it's, it will just be a one-time thing. And there's understanding there in terms of, it will just be that little bubble conversation that we'll have where it's like that. But I feel like in the long run, he does con- like, I am considered to be a grown up. I hope, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm not treated in the way where you just talk at me and you tell me what to do and tell me when to do it. And it's not that no more. Yeah, I'm a lot older. I don't have to listen to kind of things that I don't want to listen to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't have to sit around and listen to stuff that's going to be bad for my energies. Exactly, yeah. If I don't want to listen to it, straight up. Like, I can, like, I am old enough to hear something, and if I don't like it, I can get up and walk out the room. Yeah. I don't have to the sit here and take, yeah. do you know what I mean? I don't have to sit here and take something that I don't want to hear, man. Yeah. And I don't think that's the good thing about being about growing up. I feel like with parents and stuff yeah. like that, like, you won't have, you don't stay in that same state. And I feel like sometimes I go back to that state in my mind, Sometimes I go back to that state of my mind myself where I feel like I feel like I'm a child speaking to people because I've been treated like a child for so long. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like and I feel like now I just start but then I feel like that's just insecurities and that's just deep with deep issues within myself that I feel like are that make me feel like I'm a child. Because it could be a situation where I'm not being spoken to like a child at all. It's just me feeling like one. Yeah. It's insecurities and that's something I've got to get over and stuff like that, if you know what I mean. I'm curious about the whole um, your way of um, parenting and your father's way of parenting. What would you say is the biggest difference between your father's way of parenting and your way of parenting? Man, I don't feel like I've got enough of a sample size. Do you know yeah, what I mean? No, like, I know your daughter's <laughs> like three years old and stuff. I, I don't know if I, I, I... So it's hard to give like a proper detailed yeah, answer. Because, because I don't you're know, growing up now. Yes. But your kids aren't. Yes. But if you just had to say one thing, even if it's uh, minuscule, one thing uh, in terms of difference between your father's parenting style and your parenting style. Or even you can perhaps say your mother's uh, parenting style and your parents. I, d- I don't know if um, you're married or <laughs> no. I'm not, man. I'm not married. Let's I'm say your married. girlfriend's parenting I've got style. A girlfriend, yeah, yeah. So we're not married. Or so not if married. you don't want to use your own perspective, what about your girlfriend's perspective of parenting and your mother's perspective of parenting? Basically, comparing generations 
as well in terms of like the differences? I feel like I feel like it's a lot more deeper now, man. It's a lot more tough to be. I feel I, I honestly feel like being a parent in this day and age in 2023, I feel like is I don't know if I'm gonna get backlash for this, but I feel <laughs> like it's a lot tougher than being a parent back in yeah. the day, man. How come? Like there's so much extracurricular things that go into my daughter's not my daughter into my kids' heads. Technology, social media. Technology, social media, society. I feel like back in the day, back in the day, I would leave my home and my parents would know that I'm with this guy. Like, I would leave, go play with my friend, go play with my friend. She probably knows his parents. My mom probably yeah, knows yeah, his yeah. parents, probably knows this, this and this and this. And even There's if less they don't, they know this guy. Is. Yes. Yeah. And they know exactly, they not because they're obviously there's still an element of when I leave, they don't know what's going on. But there was also that element of they know what's being put into my head. Yeah, the information because that you're digesting. Yeah. Exactly, but these days you actually don't know what's going through because right now, obviously, my daughter's free. Like we just thought about, my son's two months. They they're not at the age where they're going to be taking in information that I don't know of. I think I like to make it a job of myself to know exactly what it is that's being put into my children's Text heads. Your kids. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like, and I feel like back in the day, it wasn't it wasn't a must. But I feel like these days it's an actual oh, yes. it's must. Mandatory. You need to keep yeah, an eye no on the things that are going. You must. You need them. to, man. Yeah. You need to keep an eye on the things that are being put into your children's heads because you don't know where it's going to lead to in ten years. There's things that take effect because I know obviously I'm grown up myself. I, there's things that I think about that I heard, saw, felt when I was 13, 12, 11, 10 years old that have impacted me now that my parents might not know about. Yeah, same here. Yeah, Do you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. my parents still to this day don't know about. And I feel like these days, I feel like that is a risk and a half, man. Not knowing, yeah. letting your children be influenced by things that you don't know about. Mm. I feel like that is such a risk because you don't know what it is. But then obviously there's that element of you've got to let them go. You've got to let them kind of live their lives and you can't let them. You can't shelter them forever because they need exactly. to form their own identity. You can't be always around them. Things, yeah. You know what I mean? You can't always be around them. You can't, you've got, you can't put them in this protective bubble even when they leave the house. Can't be, uh, you can't, it's just that it's a fine line. This is what I'm trying to say to you. It's, I feel like it's a lot more difficult. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back in the day, I feel like, I feel like I could leave the house. I could leave the house, do you know what I mean? Come back at a certain time, whatever time that may be. And my parents don't even ask no questions about what Same it is. Same here, like playing out like football and stuff. Yes, Come back home at like eight or nine and boom, sorted. And, and it's, that's it. And summer holidays and, and shit, yeah. But <laughs> I honestly feel like, I hope I, hope I don't get too on my kids. But I feel like when they get to a certain age and they leave the house one twelve o'clock and come back eight or nine, I feel like ha, it's going to be tough for me to not say what have yeah. you been doing out there? Like what have you like? It's like an actual breakdown yeah. of what you've been doing out there. What's been going on? Because anything can be happening, and it's scary. It's tough, and it's still a challenge that I'm looking forward to. And I'm thinking, of, and even now, my kids are free. I'm trying to implant things in their brains to make them comfortable enough to tell me. Yeah, Do you know what I mean. I'm trying to implant things in them. That'll make them comfortable enough to just not even have to me ask. Just come yeah. back and want to chat to your dad about what you've been doing in the day, what you've yeah. been doing, who you've been seeing, what you've been up to. Mm. If you don't feel comfortable enough to talk, like we've just said, I want you to go to your auntie, I want to go to uh, to your nan and to you to your granddad and stuff like this. That's where I feel like it's a lot more different being a parent in this day and age. It's a lot more scary. It's really daunting, and, and it's and obviously being a father of a girl. Um. You know what I mean? That's that's scary in itself because I think it's obvious why it's quite universally well, known. Exactly, yeah. and yeah, man, I feel like it's a, it's very tough. Their generation, our generation, I feel like it's a lot. It was a lot. Obviously, there was of course difficulties in their yeah. generation. Of course, like there was obviously difficulties, but I feel like the difficulties these days, man. Let's say, for example, I was thirty three and my daughter's what what thirteen. Oh, that is a scary time for me because she's a teenager. She's just hitting that. She's a girl. She's a teenager. Yeah. She's just hitting that age where she's going to be wanting to find things out. And I'm going to be, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to crumble. But I, I feel yeah. like I've got to set myself up for that. I feel like that's the positive of our generation now. I don't have to, I don't, I'm not doing it on my own. Yeah. You've got mediums like YouTube, like podcasts, where you can, like this right now, where you could probably tune in to listen to me talking about my kids and listen to their experience and listen to somebody else's experience. Whereas back in the day, you really just got you and parents yeah to go off and on top of that as well it's like when your daughter gets older so let's just say 10 years time 20 years time um of course this uh, podcast will be public so she can watch exactly so she'll be able to watch your 23 year old exactly. talk watch her father see your at own perspective etc and um i feel like that's so interesting it's gonna be so like like a like that's a crazy. time travel machine yeah, no man, YouTube's are close the internet's closer to time travel it completely. is you know? yeah <laughs> that's such a shout it is because 
but our parents wouldn't have that. I don't. Yeah, think we could literally go back to like oh images from two thousand and six or something, it's got like pictures. MySpace or whatever. But um, it's such a good way of um, like in terms of your fatherhood and stuff. Um, I love what you're saying. I can't relate because I'm not clearly a directly to have a child. Um, but if anyone wants to change, uh, <laughs> <laughs> put yourself out there. Do it here. No, I'm not ready. I'm literally not ready for that. Give me like seven years, six years. But like, <laughs> listen, time is time. Is. But, like, um, but what you're saying um, reminds me of a proverb. I think you've heard this before. It's um, if a child is not embraced by a village. It'll burn it down just to feel its warmth, and I think it's I don't, it's just an African proverb, I believe. Um, I don't know the specific source, Never but what you're saying right now, uh, it really accurate. relates to that quote, and I admire that as well because you said earlier, if she can't come to me, or if your son can't come to you, um, your your grandma, your My your auntie. mother, etc., no, and how? that um, infrastructure um, mm -hmm. and that support and that blueprint, I guess, just. Exactly. Uh, protect your kids um it goes to show that they're, they're protected and they're cared for always because man. i'm the <laughs> um unfortunately i was the opposite uh, compared to your kids but i'm very well, i got super super fucking lucky that i came out stronger the other side yeah, yeah. the other side even when you knew me in primary school i was going through that literally that's props to you but oh thanks man. <laughs> you come out the other end. real enough yeah for real it's difficult it's difficult man i was literally watching your podcast and honestly but the reason why i was watching it and I felt like I was closing my eyes and I was listening to my sister talk <laughs> with a male voice. You know, what I, you know what I mean? Because I feel like the things, the, the type of things that you were saying about your relationship with uh, your your dad. Yeah. Obviously, it's a bit different with my dad and my because I was a lot younger when things were going on in my household mm, and things yeah. were going on in my family. I was young. I didn't understand it. My sister was a teenager. You know what I mean? What's this the age gap between? There's five years between each of us. Oh, okay. I've got yeah. two siblings. There's, my brother's 10 years older than me and my sister's five years older than me. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I feel like that's just what I feel like. The things, when because she, she was a teenager when things were really going on in my household. Yeah. And I was, what, nine, ten? I didn't understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just wanted to go play out. I just wanted to yeah, leave yeah, the area. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But she was in it. She was a teenager. She was going through these, these things have stuck with her throughout her life and like make or break certain choices that she's made in her life, which is why I was, this is why I felt like it, it resented you so differently because just because of the things you went through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously uh, that's that's the type of thing I was talking about, like the relationship with my father. My me and my dad, I feel like I feel like I can switch my dad off very easily yeah. when we get into arguments when we get into this i feel like i can go away and just completely forget about whatever it is we've been talking about but when it's my sister i feel like it, she she actually can't i feel like it affects her so much yeah she will have a discussion with himself an argument with him and it will affect her so much and it will affect her so much even a day after or two days after i feel like it will affect her so much just oh, because yeah. she, it just hits her a bit different than i do but when I have an argument or a debate or just a little, just a little trifle with my father or my dad, I feel like I can actually drop it and I can actually drop it and just walk out and just, and it's done. Do you know what I mean? She reminds your sister it. reminds me of myself in a way because I told you. Man. I think <laughs> when like an argument happens or something, I think of like alternative scenarios. Oh. Like, okay, maybe if I said this, could have changed the, the and it's like um, you be dwelling on it, innit? You dwell on a lot and you, <laughs> it gets to the point where you kind of antagonize yourself. Am I the bad person? Did I do something wrong? How could I become a better person? How could I communicate prep better? Um, and like, am I like, am I a red flag, etc.? And it's just you know, that thoughts. routine. Uh, just it's like you're on a hamster wheel. So week. hard to break. Hard to break because of what happened in the past. So and hard. a lot of times we talk about teaching people how to be more empathetic and all that kind of stuff. When a lot of times we need to be unlearning. Some bad habits nah, and learning no. is way harder compared to learning stuff. Once you've learned it, it's with you. It's yeah, stuck, exactly. yeah. It's like a bad it's habit. You have man. to unlearn it, and um, it because obviously me not being a father, or whatever. You know, our lives have been in this weird traje uh, trajectory. Uh, I'm not sure if you went to college or um, university. I did. Yeah, I did. but um, it's crazy. Like just seeing you be a father and having just meeting you right now and you're, you have a second kid and shit like, but it do is. you ever get the feeling that I'm not man enough I'm not masculine enough boy listen masculinity these days is actually such a tough thing it's such a broad, it's skewed in a little way it's definitely yeah and I feel like it hits everybody differently because for me personally the masculinity thing is tough 
I'm not gonna lie, it's tough. It's extremely tough because I feel like, actually, I feel like everybody's definition of masculinity is very different. There's no fixed term. There is no fixed. It's term. so very. And I feel like mine personally, the things I struggle with, like most men in our society, is speaking. You know what I yeah. mean? It's just speaking and having that conversation. I feel like for me, I appreciate it, you coming on, though. <laughs> I'm saying it on the mental health podcast right now whilst I'm speaking. I'm <laughs> but listen, I feel like it's t- it's really tough. It's really tough because I feel like even when I'm speaking truths about something that I'm feeling, it's not a full truth, it's a half truth. And I feel like me telling that full truth to myself, even when I'm speaking to myself in my head, I feel like I'm not being fully honest with myself about how I feel. I feel like yeah. if I can't even speak to myself and I can't even be honest with myself about my feelings, how can yeah. I be honest with somebody else? If you're lying to yourself, how are you going to be honest with other people, basically? How? It's going to be yeah. difficult. And I, and I feel like that's something I struggle with a lot. That's something I struggle with a lot. I feel like I know for a fact, I know for a fact that being masculine is not being butch, being withheld and holding, oh, yeah. all, your infam- hold, holding all your... I know that for a fact. I've known it for a while. I've never struggled with knowing it I've yeah. still struggled with doing it though. Execution basically. I know the fact that I need to speak. I know it's not manly to not speak. But that's the thing I struggle with is speaking. And that's when I start to question my masculine. Like, why can't I just talk? Am I scared? What am I scared of? What am I fearful yeah. of? Why am I scared? I'm a man. Why am, why am I always in fear of saying how I feel? Yeah. And saying how I, how the things I'm thinking. That's what I struggle with the most. And it's not necessarily that because most people, what they struggle with the most is admitting to themselves that they can't speak. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The and self-awareness at the start. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like I'm aware enough. I'm, I'm, I'm more than aware. I'm aware of quite a lot in my life. But that's not the problem with me. It's <laughs> the fact that I, I know I'm aware of it, but why am I not doing something about yeah. this? I'm aware of it. Why am I not doing something? I feel like that's my main problem. Is it like you identified the problem? But it's executing the solution. It's executing it, yeah. solving the problem. I feel like it's so difficult. Right now, I, I go to counselling. I see a counsellor. Yeah. I feel like I made that a job for myself because there was a long point, there was a period of time where I was very angry. Do you know what I mean? I was it was yeah. I was an angry guy. Was and it were you like angry at yourself? Huh? Or were you angry at yourself? Bro, or? angry at myself, angry at life, yeah. angry at this person. Angry, just angry. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like this is what I'm trying to show you. I'm aware of these things. I feel like sometimes I'm so aware of these things, but executing it, executing and finding the problem to solve it was the most difficult part. So I just got to a point where I was like, man, would I be, would I benefit from being able to talk to somebody that's not involved at all in life and my life whatsoever, just a professional who speaks for a living, yeah. whose job it is to not speak about what you, you know what I mean? Would I be able to unload? Would it be better for me? 1,000% has been better. 1,000% has been better. But I still, to this day, have that problem where even if when I go to a counselling session, am I holding back? I still feel like, even when I'm speaking to this yeah. randomer, this random lady, a lovely lady, but she's a randomer, and I still feel like how... I feel like when I go there sometimes, I'm not telling full truths. Half truths. I'm still telling half truths to her. I'm still telling half truths to myself. I still can't just be out there with whatever it is I'm thinking and feeling. What do you think is stopping you from reaching the full truth? Was it something that sounds from childhood or teenage years or you just don't know yet? I feel like it is to do with my childhood, man. I feel like it, I feel like in my household, we, it wasn't... It's only recently that in my household we've really begun to talk. And like I said, this is big since, since I became a parent, since I became... Because the day that I went to my parents and told them, obviously, I was having a child, my mum was quite... It, she was... Because it was my mum who was at home. My dad wasn't actually at home at the time. Oh. And do you know what's crazy about it as well? My dad handled it way better than my mum did. Were you expecting the opposite? I was expecting the complete <laughs> opposite. Bro. I was expecting That's the complete crazy. opposite. My mum was pretty annoyed, pretty angry when I first told her. Yeah. My dad, my dad literally sat me down and had a decent conversation with me. Yeah. It took my mum probably a day to get out of it. And be completely excited to the fact that she's going to be a grandmother. But even still, it was strange to me. And since then on, we've been speaking more. Mm. And obviously the second time, because I had to do this twice, bro. Because obviously I've got a son too. And this is last, yeah. year, this, <laughs> last year this time. I was thinking, damn. I was still thinking the same things to myself. Like, how am I going to tell my parents? How am I going to tell my parents? Did it get easier? 
<laughs> Please, bro. It did not get easier. Yeah. It did not get easier. I was thinking to myself, how the hell am I gonna go to my parents and tell them this for the second time? Yeah. At the position I'm in, because the position, the position I was in, the position I was in, not only did I have to tell them that I was having another child, whatever I also had to tell them I wasn't mentally there. I was yeah. not mentally there. I was I was going through a lot of things at the same time. And like I said to my girlfriend, at the time, I, was, I was talking to my girlfriend, I was saying to her, I don't want to just go tell them that I'm having a baby. I want to unload. I want to use this conversation to just have a deep one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And honestly, I had that conversation. That one day I was just at my house and I was like, fuck this, I'm going to have this conversation with them. I told my sister to come upstairs. I told my, my dad to come up and my mom to come up. And we just had a conversation in their room. It was absolutely beautiful, bro. And every single time, the first time, I regretted not telling them sooner. Second time, I regretted not telling them yeah. sooner. Do you know what I mean? Like, So I feel like now I really do. It's a lot easier for me to go to them because I know for a fact after, if I don't go to them, I'm going to regret not. Yeah, They're my bubble. They're my support bubble. Do you know what I mean? So why can I not go to them? Out of everybody in this world, like um, I used to be very... I used to be at a certain point in my life be very, I don't know what Passive. the word is. Nah, I'm thinking uh, of a word just to say like I used to feel like I, I used to feel like my friends would be my go-to people to yeah. tell things to and stuff like this, and I'd feel like my parents and my mom, my dad, and the my opposite. sister would be like the, the opposite. Yeah. And now I'm at a point where they're my go-to, Switched. man. They're yeah. my absolute go-to. Um, I, I'm not going to my friends for nothing before I go to my family, before I go to my blood, because they know who I am. They know where I come from. They they, they are me. They, they Flesh and yeah, blood. Exactly. Above they know where I come from. They know my. They know what our values are as a family. Do you know what I mean? Like I said just now, I was talking about how angry, how, how angry I was for a good year. Do you know what I mean? I was just, just an angry guy. And it hit me towards the end of the year, like that's not me, that's not my family, that's not who we are. I'm not one of angry example people, for your, we're very yeah. chilled, we're very relaxed yeah, people, yeah. that's not who I am. Why have I become this, so angry? And answering those type of questions, and obviously now I feel like I'm very chill again. Now I feel like I, I, it, it will take a lot for me to lose it. Yeah, It takes a lot for me to, lo- to absolutely lose it. And it's a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah, A good thing and a bad thing, but... I wanted to ask about the anger thing as well. Um, <laughs> anger is such a interesting emotion because it's one of the most intense emotions you can feel of course, of course. Um, when you feel angry um, I guess from my perspective it's you direct at anyone you just want it out mm-hmm. and unfortunately it leads to people being hurt yep. whether it's in a mental way whatever um, and of course it can break relationships and sometimes you know when you've been I guess quote unquote a failure most of your life you kind of get angry at yourself in terms of what I could have done better, which is what I felt, which is why I felt, uh, felt immense anger. Because obviously coming out, uh, coming out of graduation and stuff, you know, just being angry and being like, am I not, like, what am I doing wrong, etc. <laughs> it got to the point where I couldn't look myself in the mirror and all that kind of stuff. Oh, bro. But I wanted to ask in terms of your anger, how did you direct such a powerful energy in a healthy way to make sure it doesn't hurt other people? <laughs> it wasn't in a healthy way for a very long time. Yeah. I didn't necessarily handle it the best. I didn't necessarily handle it the best. I said things, did things that yeah. I imminently didn't leave, regretted yeah. straight away as soon as I've done them, as soon as I've said them. Yeah. But what was that transition like from being angry to now you're a chill guy? I don't know what it was. I don't I can't even I can't even look back. What was the um how long was the time frame uh from you to be angry to chill? Like was it like a year, was it months? Or I know it was a gradual change, but like, you know, what happened? Definitely a gradual change. I feel like at first I had to tell myself that this ain't me. This is not who I was raised to be. This isn't. Yeah. You don't want, yeah. This isn't. You, that's not your identity. That's not my, all. exactly. That's not my identity. That's not my core. Yeah. I fir- at first it was telling myself that. After that, it was just now, what am I going to do to manage situations when I do get angry? Yeah. And I feel like now, I said this to my counsellor a couple of weeks ago, I said to her something and I was thinking to myself, and I said it out at random. I didn't actually, I didn't, I just said it out at random and I said, I feel like the more I've got to say, the less I say. You know what I mean? The more yeah. things I actually have to say, when I think I have, I've got my brain saying so much stuff I need to say, I want to say, then I, my mouth is not saying a word. Yeah. But the it's, less I've got to say, that's when I speak. It's like the loudest person in the room is the one that doesn't speak at all. Exactly, bro. Yeah. Exactly, and and I feel like I feel like that. I still to this day I don't think I handle it that well. 
Because now when I get angry and when I get annoyed, I just get silent. Yeah. And it's it, not good, man. Yeah. It's not good because it will take me a while to snap out of that silence. I'm just, I just get quiet. My, my girlfriend knows it as well. She, she, she tries to get me to snap out of it sometimes. And it's like, it's tough because you do need these things. You do need these mediums and these people that to remind you that, listen, just, just talk, just, just say yeah. something. But I really do get silent. I feel like that's what I was saying to you. The real person I am is a quiet, shy guy. I'm a quiet, I'm shy. I force confidence. Like and I'm goofy as well. <laughs> <laughs> Castle primary days, so, man. You forget. <laughs> I'm goofy, yes, 100%. 100%. Well, um, but my natural person is just quiet and shy. Yeah. I force confidence. Like, I feel like... I feel like I'm good enough at acting where I get to a point where I can pretend to be the most confident guy. Yeah. I, mean, I could be, I'm, I'm absolutely, I'll be quaking in my head, like shaking in my head yeah. in a situation, but I'm so good at pretending it's not there. Mm. I'm so good at pretending that I'm not daunted by whatever the situation is. Yeah. And that's what I feel like, like, yeah, that's, that's just, so I feel like to this day, I don't think I handle it the best. I feel like I am who I am now and I'm a lot, I'm doing a better job at, being who I am and being who I, my identity, like we just said. But I still struggle, man. I still struggle. It's a daily challenge. It's something you could do every single day. You try yeah. to be better, try to handle things better. I'm not all there. I never will be exactly all there. Yeah, but progress though. Exactly. That's the and best thing I can do, man. It's important for your kids as well and also uh, exactly. your girlfriend and family because when you go through that struggle, within the struggle, there's lessons. Mm -hmm. And those lessons you can mm -hmm. teach your uh, daughter, son, etc., etc. Your your girlfriend. Um, I feel like when it comes to moments of adversity and anger and stuff like that, having a girlfriend, having your kids, having your family, having that support network, one of the most important so things I, I realized, because I used to be, <laughs> I know we haven't seen each other for a long time, but during my teen years and stuff, it was just me. Like everyone else can fuck off the other because, you know, people don't like the way I, because um, after secondary school, I gained weight and stuff. I was obese. Um, and obviously you are a judge based on, uh, the way you look. Of course. Um, it's, it's a subconscious thing, you know. Um, you judge yourself sometimes. Yeah, literally you judge yourself sometimes what you see in the mirror. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, that can affect your personality, et cetera, et cetera. But having a girlfriend, having kids, having a support network, they're so important American. in terms of reminding you who you are. And without those people, you could fall down this wormhole of mm -hmm. anger, resent, et cetera. I mean, and I fell down that uh, path as well because... Um, I didn't have anyone. And when you don't have anyone, you don't have anyone to check you or, you know, <laughs> exactly affirm that. who you really are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just want to say shout out to your girlfriend as well. Shout out to your loved ones for really telling you, Dean, this is not you, mm -hmm. this is who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, you know, it's interesting because being both the same age and you having two kids and stuff, it's, do you feel like you're doing a good job being a father. I know it's a very subjective thing. Yeah. Um, but do you personally feel like you're doing a good job? If so, why or why not? I feel like I am, man. I feel like I am. I Let's like go. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I feel like I am. I feel like I am. And I have to tell myself these things. I have to tell myself mm. these things because I'm not going to say I'm not. Because I feel like I am, of course. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. try and butter it up because I do feel like I am doing a good job in terms of that aspect. You think yourself up. Father. Think myself <laughs> Same up with your chest. Every time. <laughs> Every time I feel like a lot of people, I feel like the main reason I went to counseling, the main reason I went to counseling to sort myself out and to speak to somebody was because of my kids. Because I can't remain this angry person because it's going to have an impact on my door. I want the best things for her. I want, to, I would do anything to protect her kindness. And like I said, like I said, I've got more, I've got a daughter and a son, but I would protect, do anything to protect their kindness and their soul. I want them to remain well lovely. Corrupted. Yes, I want them to remain lovely and kind and just pure for as long as remotely possible. Yeah. And I feel like for me to make sure of that is for me to check myself every time and to make sure that I am a protector, as, provider, exactly, great person. As perfect yeah. as whatever I can be. Do you know what I mean? And that's when I realized that I, I needed to speak to someone. Like I said, I've, I am aware of a lot of things. I, every, every time something occurs, something happens in myself, there's a change. I'm aware of it. Yeah. The only problem I have is solving that problem. And I feel like with my kids, I can't have that. They have to both, I have to be doing well in both. I have to be able to be aware and I have to be able to solve that problem. Yeah, identify a solution. Exactly. Definitely. For their, for their. For their sake. Exactly. For your for sake. Their sake. Yeah. For my sake, for their sake. I feel yeah. like if they weren't around right now, God forbid, let's say, let's say I did not end up 
having children in another timeline somewhere, you know what I mean, in another yeah, yeah, universe, yeah. I didn't have kids. I don't know where I'd be because I don't know where, what the reason it would be. I'd have to go seek counselling. What would the reason I'd be to have go speak to someone? What would the reason be? Why would I be doing it? What would be spurring me on to go do this? Would I even be having the relationship I have now with my family because I wouldn't have that thing that sparked it. I was going to have to tell them that my girlfriend's pregnant and I'm having a child. That thing that sparked everything to make me realise that I need to speak to people. Mm. What would it be? Do you know what I mean? So I'm absolutely grateful for everything that that's happened even if it's even if it hasn't happened necessarily in the best way i'm absolutely grateful because it's happened and it's made me who i am now that's what i feel like, that's where i feel like i can 100 percent not fail because i will always be aware of myself enough to know if there's anything slip-ups in my behavior if there's slip-ups in the things that i'm doing daily i'm not talking like if i just have a bad day i'm gonna beat myself up and say what's wrong with you you know what i mean i'm not gonna do that but if I have consecutive bad days, what is going on? I need to be aware of that. How, what is the impact it's having on Kyra, my daughter, and my son? Do you know what I mean? Like, and I'll always have them to remind me, even if they don't have mouths, like, then even if they don't speak themselves yeah. like, Dad, this is what's going on with you, what's going on? I'll be looking at myself from their perspective. Mm, yeah. What are they seeing me do right now? What are they looking at me do? Like, the facial expressions on my face, like, when I have a bad day. And that's not me saying to anybody out there, that's not me saying, you need to keep an eye on how, like, how your face looks when the kids are around. Like, no, it's yeah. not that deep. It's yeah, I got a rest and bitch face. It's terrible. You know what I'm saying, bro? It's not, it's, not, it's not that. It's not It's not like that at all. Yeah. It's not like that at all, but you need to notice these things when they become consecutive. When they start happening a lot of times in a week, when you start to notice these things in yourself that's happening a lot of times, that's when you need to check yourself. You need to be like, what's going on? You need to check yourself. You need to realise these things. Um, and I feel like I'm very good at that. I'm very good at that. Yeah. At being able to look at myself. I feel I don't like... Want, um, uh, so he goes. I was gonna say um, a lot of times, like because I can't relate to being a father. I can't relate to having. But you can you relate know. to but being a son, though. True. I was gonna mention that what that. you're saying is, you know, you want to give everything to them. You want, you know, counselling to make sure you're a better person. Do you? Uh, I don't think I've ever said this publicly. Have I said this publicly? I'm gonna say it right now. But Break it down, boy. When Go. this whole filmmaking thing, this whole podcasting, my work ethic, etc. Um, and all these things that I do, you know, like I like to be in front of the camera, like, you know, trying to dress like a fly, sexy camera. Hey, you're, look, <laughs> you're looking at boy, you're looking the part, man. Thanks, man. Listen, I see it, I see you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Go. Well, um, the reason why all this is, fuck, I'm going to say it right now, but for my future family. Um, you're setting those know, foundations you're up. You're the foundation, because I've been, it started properly in year nine uh 13 years old so this was after primary school mm -hmm. and it, i wasn't thinking at the time but it's very unconscious so i was in youtube videos etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. time it became more of a thing like okay i don't know if i'm ever gonna become a success but it's worth a shot to give it my all and um hopefully i can give back to my future wife and my future kids um and it's just like you know because doing this and being a better person etc like improving your mental health and improving your awareness etc identifying the problem and solving the problem as well it's all about betting yourself to make sure that you're the best possible version for Don't your future yourself. wife and kids because no, no, no. you gotta be there for them man like you have to be you have to be yeah and and you have to be and it's not even necessarily like when you say you have to be there for them a lot of people think of it that way when you when you let's say you haven't got kids you haven't got that girlfriend you haven't yeah. got that, that your own family yeah you necessarily don't get to that point where you look at yourself and you're like, oh, it's quite scary when you think, oh, when I have a family, I've got to be the man at the house and I've got yeah. to be this and I've got to be that. Those things fall into place. It's not yeah. one of those situations where you need to be this and you need to be this. Like you said, you're trying to set those foundations Found, up yeah, so yeah. you can get to that point. Plant the seeds, you know basically. I mean? Exactly. It's a gradual process. And for me personally, I didn't have the time. Yeah. I was a kid, so I didn't have the time to set no foundations up. At the time, yeah. the only thing I was thinking about was success. The only thing I've ever thought about since I was like eight years old is being successful in my field. That's the only thing I've ever wanted for myself. Yeah. And that's all I ever thought about. And then obviously, gradually, like I said to you, it's been like a three-year process. I feel like it's still go ongoing now. Like I said, it's a daily thing. Yeah. But I feel like it's even now been a quite a long time process of me trying to figure out that these things are going to come, man. You need to relax. You need to mm. calm down. You need to just slow down. Because it's taking me a long time because obviously, like I just said to you, I, my girlfriend knew, my mum knew, my dad knew. Like, 
like even do you know what? I was applying for something a couple of months ago, and it was for a film festival or something, right? Yeah. And uh, I was applying for something and uh, something about they wanted a short film or something like that, and they wanted you to just do like a video, uh, a video interview kind of to speak yeah, about yeah, yeah. why you do this and st- why you're into yeah, yeah. And stuff it's like not a bit more basically. And in, and in the f- in the video, I was like, and I d- didn't even realize it till I was doing the video and the camera was in my face and I was sitting upstairs and I was like, I've always wanted, I've always always. Always wanted what I want now. Since I probably since we were in school together, I've always yeah. wanted to be in the entertainment industry, the film industry specifically. Yeah. Like, like you remember, I was in the Lion King. I was in. I was in. Oh the, shit! Bro, yes, you forgetting? Oh my god! Come on! Oh, no, no, no! It's been Don't, so long. It's time, right? I was in the Lion King, Bugsy Malone, and I was acting. Bugsy really Malone, bro. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to. At that point in my life, I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. Obviously, as I've grown up, I thought like I don't necessarily want to be being told what to do on a set. I want, yeah. to be, I want the vision to be mine. Yeah. I want to be implanting my vision on actors and my vision on the screen yeah. rather than being an actor. Of, although I'd still love acting and I'd probably do it. And this is what I'm just saying. Like I've wanted what I've wanted for so long in my life. My mom's on it, my dad, my sister, everybody in my family. My girlfriend's known it from the moment I met her. Like Everybody around me has known Dean wants to be in the film industry. Yeah, And that's all he wants. And... That's what I'm saying. It took me such a long time to kick that habit because I've always been, this is what I'm talking about, the trials of society and social media is because I've got, I've got I'll look on my phone and I'll see this 12 year old boy. He's got millions of cash, millions of dollars cash. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking, why am I not there right now? Why am I not at that point? And I'll beat myself to that point. Like, How is he 12? I'm 23 and I ain't got millions Paris of dollars cash. For joy. And I haven't got this yeah. and this and I haven't got this and this. And then there's people blowing up when they were, do you know what I mean? And then it took me, and then I even realized at a point where, this I used to think that it's just our society right now where young people find fame so quickly. And then I realised there's people like Chris Brown, T Pain, they were 18, 17 years old when they yeah. first released those tracks that they did with blow. So it's nothing new. Being yeah, Lil Wayne got famous, famous at like 12, 11. That's what I'm boys. saying. It's nothing yeah, new. Yeah. It's nothing new being famous at a young age. And then everything is different. This is what my belief in God and stuff like this comes into it. Everything happens at a specific time for people. Even if I if it's not going to happen now because I say I want it to happen now. Yeah, It's not going to happen now. Even if I try as hard as I can, it might still not happen now. Of mm. course, that helps it. Being Trying as hard as you can, being consistent, persistent, obviously it helps. But And that's the thing. That's the thing. Like My girlfriend and my family, it took me a while to get to realise you need to slow down, you need to chill out. Yeah, I, I've had all these, like I've said, I've got social media telling me and showing me all these kids with cash, millions of followers and this and this. And I... And I was thinking, why am I not there? And it took me a long time to hit that point where I just slowed down. And now, ever since I've slowed down, everything's sped up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Ever, t- ever since I took a chill and realised that nothing's not going to happen so fast, I need to slow down and just work at it. One just thing I want to uh, say, because um, it'd be very interesting for your children to watch this in like 10 years, 10 time, years time or something. Time. It'll be available for them. If So when they watch this, what message would you say to both of them when they're like, I know it's a bit of a hefty, Tough. big task, but if you had to like give a brief message to 13, 12 year old, um, I don't know your uh, children's names, but- um, My daughter's name is Kyra. Kyra. And Keanu. Kyra and Keanu. So, hello Kyra and Keanu. <laughs> hello. <laughs> well, you're on number. <laughs> but um, to Kyra and Keanu. What I have for them? Yeah, to both of them. Or you can say, um, hi Kyra, da da is what I want to say to you. Hi, Keanu, I want to say this to you. Or you can have a message that's like direct for both of them. I hope that you're there for each other is the main thing. Mm. The two of you, because well, obviously I don't know if I'm going to have more kids, but I don't think I'm going to yeah. have more kids. <laughs> you need to chill. But if, there's a, if there's a third and fourth there in behind the camera right now, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not addressing this to you too. <laughs> but I feel like I want them to be there for each other. Mm. I want you, you to be there for each other. That is the main thing for me, man. I feel like uh, it's you two against the world. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Of course, until you go off and have your own families and stuff like this, it's you two against the world. Yeah. And you have to protect each other. So you and your sister. Exactly, yeah. man. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Until you go off and have your own families and have your own things, even then, it's you two against the world. It's your family is against the world. Your family need to unite. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Your cousins, your aunties and stuff like this, you just need to be together. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I f- for me, that's the main thing. I don't know if there's... Yeah, listen to your else. dad. 
Because yeah. you guys can go fast alone, but you can go very far together. Together, so. together. And like, you know what I mean? Like there's going to be a certain point where not as many people as around from my generation. There won't be as many people of your aunties and your dads and your uncles. There's not going to be as many people. It's just going to be you two. Mm. You have to protect each other. You've got to be there for each other at all times. Yeah. Stay close. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. And uh, yes. no matter what, no matter you've got to remember... Got to stay strong for each other. Exactly, man. Exactly. So. Stay strong for each other. Stay strong for your children if you're watching this when you've already had children. I don't know. Damn, that's crazy. You know what I mean, bro? <laughs> but don't yeah. make me feel like a granddad, man. Fucking <laughs> hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mm. man. Stay together. Stay strong. Mm. That's that's all I got, I think. And I um, say this question to every guest um, for the podcast. There are people who are struggling with mental health. Um, they can be watching or listening if you're a Spotify listener. Um, be sure to rate on Spotify, five stars. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, there are people who struggle with mental health and they don't really know what advice to get because there's so much advice thrown at them. A what lot. advice would you give to people who are struggling with mental health? It's temporary. Mm. It's always yeah. temporary. You're going to look at yourself, even, even if you necessarily haven't overcome whatever it is that you're going through in five years, you're going to look at yourself five years ago and think it wasn't as deep as it, what I thought it was. Yeah. Then. Do you know what I mean? It's always going to be temporary. You're going to get past it. And just, that's mainly it, man. Because everybody always, when you're going through things, you kind of live in it. Mm. You stay in it, you go out, you go to work, you're still in this mindset that things yeah. are everything is going wrong. And in that moment. For one thing, everything can't go wrong. There's definitely something going right in your life. There's definitely something going well in your life. Even something simple like just breathing. Something little yeah. being alive, bro. Yeah. That's the main thing. Remember that you're alive and there's always gonna be something going well. So just don't dwell in it. Do you know what I mean? And even if you're going in it, even if you're watching this right now and watching me talk right now and you're going through something right now, something really bad, two weeks from now, a week from now, three days from now, however long it is, an hour from now, you're not going to be feeling the same as you were an hour ago, mm. three days ago. You're not going to be feeling the same. You're going to be in a better situation because you're three days older, you're three days smarter, you're an hour smarter. You've lived through this situation that you've just had, this mental, this mental health situation, this yeah. difficult situation. You've lived through it. You've survived an hour of it. You survived a week of it. You've survived a year of it and come out the other end. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It, it's temporary. It's always temporary. Bad situations are always tempor temporary. Even good situations, as a matter of fact, are always temporary. It's just up to us to maintain good situations. Mm. So yeah, that's all I have. It's mm. always temporary and never lasts. Bad situations never last. Good situations never last, but it's up to your perspective. It's up to your perspective. You it's up to you. How do you want to maintain these situations and how, what you're going to take from the situation that you're yeah. going through? What are you going to take from the situation? What positive things can you take from it mm. that can help you move on, that can help you learn when you go into the situation again five years from now? And if you have the same situation, how can I handle it, which is going to be 20 times better? That will make me feel 20 times better. Mm. I think that's the best I got. And... He spent bars, man. <laughs> <laughs> bars. Bars, boy. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, as I say, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Dean, man, long fucking time, long man. Time. <laughs> I'm glad we did it this way, too. Yeah, to as well. Documented. Was just, <laughs> yes, yeah. bro. Because if it was just out there in the streets and we just bumped into each other, it would have been a lot yeah. more different. But this is on film and shit. Yes. There. Yes. A, convers a proper conversation. Yeah. And um, it's just crazy, man. But... Thank you so much for just, you know, coming through. Every time. Really you know how excited it. I've been to come oh. on. It's an absolute honour to be on the Renaissance podcast. I'm oh. proud of you as well for becoming creative director for the oh. student part. Listen, listen, I've been watching. Oh, I've been watching. Oh, Always man. know when you drop something that Dean's watching. Just know that, yeah? Oh, Every man. single time. Every Shit. single time. I'm caramel. I'm there cheeks behind are turning red, <laughs> But, uh, man... Um, it's, an, it's a privilege. And, of course, me, like, likewise, in terms of just, like, what you do as well, like, I... You know, it's just nice to meet another filmmaker, um, another creative, and just overall, just another great person. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And this is only the start. Only so, the beginning. Only the beginning. Um, You're going to be seeing our faces. Stuff was both, man. Like 23, give another 10 years, this shall be a moment. Yes, bro. This, this should be the start of it. This shall be a classic, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we both make it to the top. We look back at this and be like, like this oh, episode. we were so naive. <laughs> <laughs> we are. But, um, we are, man. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Definitely. I can see oh. it now. Crazy, but ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. Check out Lift Media on Instagram, yes, and YouTube. Yes. And is there any other platform website? I've not actually got a lot of platforms. No, I've only yeah. got Instagram, Instagram and YouTube, YouTube. But those yeah. are the main things right now. Subscribe on YouTube. Mm. 
follow on Instagram, keep up to date with what we're working on. Mm-hmm. Uh, films, yeah. uh, video, Short videography, etc., music videos, all anything, kind of stuff. Anything to entertain, anything really. visual. We talk football, we talk yeah. music, we talk filmmaking. Yeah, podcast coming soon as well. Is podcast, it? Yeah, football podca- podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, depending on when this, when this year, yeah, <laughs> it'll probably, it'll probably already, already out. out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably already out. Well, um, but yeah, yeah man, man, keep an eye out for everything. Mm. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you, motherfuckers, till next one. Peace. <laughs>